today we are discuss classroom discourse types of class and type of classroom discourse for good ideas and true innovation you need human interaction conflict argument and debate these are the words of margaret hefferman a famous educationist and a business woman the term interaction is made up of two morphemes namely inter and action it is a mutual or reciprocal action in english language teaching interaction is used to indicate the language used to maintain conversation teach or interact with participants involved in teaching and learning in the classroom let us come to the keyword classroom discourse the word discourse comes from the latin language discourses it means an argument the term classroom discourse refers to the interaction between teachers and students talking or conversation is the medium through which most teaching takes place so the study of classroom discourse is the study of the process of face to face classroom teaching an entirely different form of classroom discourse occurs when students are working together in small groups okay when we analyze a classroom we can see that the teacher talk more than 2/3 of the time a few students contribute most of the answers boys talk more than girls and those sitting in the front and center of the class are more likely to be contribute than those sitting at the back side brecha alpert has identified three different patterns of classroom discourse silent is the first one the teacher talks most all the time and ask only an occasional questions in this phase teacher is the main character like traditional method of teaching largely teacher centered with the teacher hogging the limelight always the lecture at length on particular topics and student listen to them with rapt attention the second phase is controlled as in the uh, uh, traditional teaching uh, this is also in a control students are also in a control situation then third one is active this phase teacher facilitate uh, while the students uh, talk primarily to each other they can ask questions they can ask doubts they can clarify uh, their points each other recently teaching is based on constructivist view also views on learning so teachers ask pure questions and students can express what understand and justify their beliefs and arguments constructively michael w doyle a university professor in columbia also categorized classroom culture in the words of doyle a classroom is a setting in which usually 20 or 30 students in a class are gathered one or two adults to engage in activities which have educational purposes and outcome for the students from this standpoint there are several important features or dimensions of classroom that are already in place when teachers and students arrive at the classroom door according to doyle a classroom has six characteristics multidimensionality simultaneity immediacy unpredictability and history okay let us come to the first character multidimensionality a classroom has many different features it is like a theater many events and tasks will take place it is crowded place in which many people with different choices and abilities gathered under a roof to accomplish their objectives okay the second feature is simultaneity many things happen at once in classrooms while helping a student to clear his doubt during a work a teacher has to monitor the rest of the class accept other requests for assistance handle interruptions and keep track of time the immediacy is immediacy is the third one there is a rapid pace of classroom events gump and jackson have estimated that an elementary teacher has over 500 exchanges with individual students in a single day in most instances therefore teachers have little leisure time to reflect before acting unpredictability is the fourth feature we cannot predict day to day events happening in a classroom sometimes events are jointly produced and that is thus it is often difficult to anticipate how an activity will go on on a particular day with a particular group of students the next one is publicness classroom is a public place where the incidents are taking place in front of the children then another one is and last one is history when a new group starts normally there will be a problem of adjustment after two or three months 
there will be a common set of experience and routines which facilitate an atmosphere for conducting activities for the rest of the term. All of these factors help to create interaction among students. In 1985, Michael P. Breen lists out following as the characteristics of a classroom, some of the which appears equivalent to Doyle's features. They are interactive, differentiated, collective, normative, asymmetrical, conservative, jointly constructed and immediately signified. Okay, for first one is interactive. As we experience, students in a classroom interact each other in many ways for many purposes. Differentiated is the second character. Uh, it, in it, students in a classroom is like different flowers in a single garland. All of them have their own abilities and are coming dif from different families so that they are different in each and every aspects. Then collective. There are both communal and personal learning experiences. Another one is normative. Every group of students have their own norms and conventions. Asymmetrical is the another one. All the teachers have their own rights and views and attitudes. We cannot compare one pers to person to another. Conservative. C classroom culture seeks social and emotional equilibrium which can make it difficult to introduce changes. So we cannot conduct any experiments in the classroom for a change. Another one is uh, jointly constructed. Knowledge is jointly constructed and reconstructed in the classroom. Immediately significant is the last one. Participants invest the, in the unfolding culture of the classroom because of its immediate relevance to what is to be born. The, according to Bernstein, instructional discourse creates learning opportunities. It depends upon the relationship between teachers and students. Neil Mercer also identified three types of talk in classroom situation. First one is disputational talk. By the word dispute, we can understand that there is a lot of disagreement and agreement. Everyone just make their own decisions. There are few attempts to pool resources or to offer constructive criticism. The atmosphere is competitive rather than cooperative. Then second one is cumulative talk, in which everyone simply accepts and agrees with what other people say. Children used to talk and sh to share knowledge but they do so in an uncritical way. Children repeat and elaborate each other's idea, but they don't evaluate them carefully. Exploratory talk is another one in which everyone listen actively. People are asked questions, they share relevant information, everyone is encouraged to contribute ideas and opinions they, and they treated with respect. There is an atmosphere of trust. According to Chang, classroom discourse has four structures. They are I, uh, known as IRF is the first one. It means uh, initial response feedback, instruction, probing questions, ar argumentation. In the first structure, the class is exactly following the conventional method of teaching, initiation, response and feedback. The teacher asks question, student answered, teacher evaluates or gives feedback. Then instruction is the second structure of classroom discourse. In this type, teacher give instruction. As per the instruction, students follow non-verbally. Next one is probing question. In this structure of discourse, teacher asks referential questions and students are encouraged to give long answers. Argumentation is the fourth structure of classroom discourse. In this structure, teacher may face challenging situations in order to make them to justify their uh, reasons. Classroom discourse is a special type of discourse that occurs in a classrooms. Special features of classroom discourse include unequal power relationships, turn taking at speaking, pattern of interaction, etc. Researchers and language teachers focus on classroom discourse in order to know that what actually happens in the classroom that really matters, that makes a difference to the learner's progress in language acquisition. Okay, net, now let us watch a uh, video about classroom discourse or classroom interaction. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, in this presentation, I will be talking about classroom discourse and teacher development, uh, which is extracted from Steve Walsh's book, Exploring Classroom Discourse uh, Language in Action. 
uh, according to Steve Walsh, in, um, in order to improve both the quality of teaching and learning, teachers should study their own use of language and its effect on learning. Uh, because, as we know, language underpins everything that goes within the classroom. And it is the key factor that could either enhance and promote interaction and learning or hinder it. So it is very crucial for teachers to study their own use of language in the classroom. And they could do this, uh, for example, by recording their lectures and their lessons. Then once they go home, they listen to them and study them and see whether they, they do what it takes to improve uh, interaction or not. Because again, according to Steve Walsh, language teachers might improve their professional practices by focusing on classroom discourse. And they could do this, I mean like improving their uh, quality of teaching and learning. Steve Walsh uh, suggests few strategies to do this. First of all, by improving questioning strategies. Second, by making the classroom more communicative. Third, by improving uh, interactive decision making. And finally, by dealing with reticence. And we will get to each one of these strategies in details. The first one, improving questioning strategies. Uh, teachers can be trained to ask appropriate but fewer questions to imp uh, so as to increase the learning involvement. Again, as we all know, questions are very, very essential in, in, uh, in the classroom in order to make uh, to make sure that the students are following because a lesson without questions would be just a boring lecture and students would not really learn much from it so teachers should make sure they ask appropriate questions that would uh, enhance uh, learning and encourage students to, to uh, participate and interact uh, in the book, we find that uh, there is uh, 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 that Steve Walsh includes Thompson's classification of questions, and they could be classified according to him again into first the form, and that is to say they are closed or open questions. Um, in terms of, of the content, and here are they personalized questions? Uh, are they about learners' opinions and experiences? And here Steve Walsh again in encourages teachers to ask uh, students about their uh, opinions and experiences and I mean to make them more personalized because that way uh, there is no right or wrong answer to the question and that way you encourage students to participate and talk at ease in the classroom. The third classification is according to the purpose and here either they are display or referential questions. By display questions we mean que very uh, uh, close questions that just require yes or no questions. And they are usually um, asked by the teachers to check understanding. For example, the uh, teacher would ask the students, do you understand this? And the students would reply by yes or no. Then there is the referential questions which are more uh, required in order to promote interaction and they are open questions they are usually WH questions and the and the, the answer is usually open and you know by asking the students to reflect on a particular topic and uh, state their opinions or something <coughs> making classroom discourse more communicative here, teachers, they could do this by asking many referential questions instead of display questions. Content feedback. Teachers should focus on the content rather than the structure or the form. Even if the students make some grammatical mistakes, mm, teachers should not correct them like all the time. I mean, again, it depends on the lesson. If it's about grammar, maybe teachers might focus on on the uh, structure but usually and uh, generally speaking teachers should always focus on the content feedback rather than the structure and the form because like correcting and over correcting students might cause students to have this unconfident and not be able to talk in the classroom increasing the teachers wait time 
students differ in their mental cap capabilities and their intelligence and in their personality. The introvert, the, the extrovert students, like they think about the question really quickly and they raise their hands to answer it quickly. But teachers should increase their waiting time. When they ask a question, they should give more time to the student to reflect on the question, to think about the answer, to formulate the answer in their mind, then to, uh, to give them the floor to talk. <coughs> Enhancing interactive decision making. And uh, here Steve Ward states that good interactive decision making uh, are those decisions that support rather than hinder the learning process. And here teachers should uh, their lesson plans and their decisions should be flexible according to, to the situation. I mean, teachers, for a teacher, for example, might have in his lesson plan for today's lesson that he will teach or she will teach uh, passive voice. But then he or she finds out that the students have not really grasped yet the uh, lesson of, of tenses which is required to understand passive voice. Then here the teacher should be flexible and change his lesson plan and start teaching lesson uh, tenses. Just an example. Uh, Bailey suggests six principles for um, in, uh, interactive decision making. First, serve the common good, which is of course like uh, to promote teaching, uh, to promote learning and interaction. I mean, teachers should always opt for activities that would promote learning and interaction. Teach the moment, as I said, the example that I just uh, mentioned of uh, like uh, changing the lesson plan according to the moment <coughs> <coughs> then to further the lesson and to accommodate learning styles here teachers should uh, mix and uh, uh, use uh, make use of different teaching methods and they should not always use the same method all the time because learning styles of students differ and they are different. So some students are audiovisual, like they like audiovisual things. Some of them, um, some of them are just like to listen. Others would just like to read. Some of them would learn more when it comes to uh, group work, uh, etc. So they should change their um, teaching methods and uh, to accommodate different learning styles of students. Promote student involvement and display the wealth and that is to say to give the opportunity to other students to talk instead of focusing on, uh, on uh, uh, I mean on all this uh, the students who talk all the time so they should engage the uh, introvert students who don't talk much dealing with reticence reticence is a very 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 uh, bad problem and uh, that uh, teachers are facing in their classrooms I mean by reticence we mean that tendency to be silent and not be eager to participate in the classroom and many students have this problem so and uh, in order to find a solution for this uh, problem we should f f first of all like investigate the reasons behind it so reticence can be the result of the lack of confidence some students they, they just don't have confidence in themselves and they don't trust that they got the right answers to the question, so they, you, th that's why they stay silent. Uh, second reason could be unwillingness to talk to, uh, to take risk. So some students, even if they know the right answer to the question asked, uh, they wouldn't raise their hands to talk. I mean, because they wouldn't take the risk. They are afraid to be to to be wrong or something. And it's the same, like fear of mistake, of making mistakes and driving. And here we're talking about the fear of the teacher or the student's judgment so that's why they prefer not to talk at all the strategies to overcome reticence as, as suggested by Steve Walsh are as follows first lengthening wait time and here when, an when a teacher asks a question give more time to the student to think about it they should give more time to the student to think about it and reflect on it and figure out the right answer and formulate it in their minds before they get to talk that way you would be at least more confident improving questioning strategies and here uh, in order to encourage children to talk Steve Walsh suggests that teachers should ask more referential questions accepting a, vari a variety of answers and here again teachers should be 
well, they should not be harsh when it comes to the feedback and say harsh things to the students, but they rather accept all the varieties of answers given by the students in order to encourage them to talk more and think about it. Making use of group work. Group work, again, could be a very, very useful strategy to improve, uh, I mean, to promote uh, learning. Because some students, they learn more from their peers and from discussing with their peers than they learn from the teacher himself. Providing content feedback, again, teachers should provide more uh, content feedback rather than structure and form feedback. And uh, to conclude, uh, we cannot address teacher development without examining classroom discourse and the various strategies that would enhance the learner's participation in the learning process. It's really, really crucial for a teacher to concentrate on classroom discourse and improve all the various mechanisms stated in this presentation. Uh, that's it for my presentation, and uh, thank you so much. When we conclude the term classroom discourse, it refers to the interaction between teachers and students. Many researchers find that in a normal classroom teachers talk most of the time. Neil Mercer notes that about 65% of the time teacher talks and about 70% of teacher talk consists of lecturing or asking questions. Doyle and Brain categorize the features of classrooms, but all of these features are almost the same because the main anchors of a classroom is all of you know that teachers and students.